SpaceX is gearing up for the final phase of ground testing to qualify the Starship Flight 9 vehicles, Ship 35 and Booster 16, for the much-anticipated test flight. Both vehicles have successfully completed cryogenic proof testing without any issues, confirming their structural integrity under extreme conditions. Now, preparations are underway at the build site for the next major milestone, static fire testing. This involves installing engines, running system diagnostics, and ensuring all subsystems are ready for the static fire. Meanwhile, the launch site is bustling with activity. Routine inspections and maintenance of the launch mount are in progress, along with the delivery of propellants and water for the deluge system. The launch tower arms are undergoing testing to ensure they function properly during vehicle stacking, while the tank farm, pumps, and heat exchangers are being checked to verify their reliability for propellant loading operations. These preparations strongly indicate that Booster 16 static fire test is imminent, and soon, the booster, fully outfitted with 33 Raptor engines, will be rolled out to the launch site. The booster engine test will be followed by an even more crucial static fire test for Ship 35. This upper stage test is particularly significant as it will validate the latest design modifications and fixes implemented to the ship's engines and propellant feed systems aimed at preventing the failures that plagued Flight 7 and 8. A long-duration static fire of Ship 35 will provide SpaceX with valuable data to assess the effectiveness of these upgrades. Engineers will closely analyze engine performance, propellant flow dynamics, and thermal management to ensure another in-flight upper stage failure is avoided. Only if SpaceX is fully confident in the reliability of the engines and their modifications will they move forward with Flight 9. In his latest post on X, Elon Musk revealed that SpaceX is finalizing the design of its next-generation Starship variant, known as V3 or Block 3. The primary goal of this upgrade is to enhance efficiency, reliability, and scalability for high-frequency launches. Alongside Musk's announcement, SpaceX has already begun assembling the first Block 3 prototype with Ship 39 expected to lead the transition. This new iteration introduces significant structural and design enhancements over previous versions. While the current Block 2 Starship is designed to carry approximately 100 tons to orbit, Block 3 aims to double that capacity, pushing payload limits to around 200 tons. A major structural change is an increase in height by over 17 meters, expanding both the propellant tanks and payload bay to accommodate larger payloads. To support this increased capacity, Block 3 will be equipped with three additional vacuum-optimized Raptor engines, bringing the total to nine. This upgrade boosts total thrust by approximately 69%, providing the additional power necessary to lift heavier payloads while maintaining mission reliability. Beyond these major upgrades, Block 3 Starship will feature thousands of design refinements across various systems, enhancing performance, reusability, and manufacturing. While many details remain unknown, these optimizations will further improve efficiency and reliability. SpaceX is also setting an ambitious target for launch cadence. Once full reusability is achieved, the company aims to launch a Starship every week within the next 12 months. This rapid turnaround presents significant engineering and logistical challenges, demanding advancements in manufacturing, refurbishment, and operational efficiency. If successful, each weekly flight could deploy around 100 tons of payload into orbit, primarily in support of the Starlink network. As SpaceX fine-tunes Starship for near-term flights, work at Starbase continues at an intense pace with significant advancements in the construction of the second orbital launch pad. One of the major developments is the construction of the flame trench, designed to channel exhaust away from the rocket during liftoff while withstanding extreme thermal loads, intense acoustic vibrations, and immense mechanical stresses. The first phase of concrete paring for the flame trench was completed over a week ago, requiring nearly 350 concrete trucks to deliver the material. The process took approximately two days as crews meticulously poured and leveled the concrete. However, additional work remains, including further concrete layers to encase the rebars embedded in the trench floor. Along with the concrete work, construction of the trench sidewalls is also progressing. Over the past few weeks, multiple prefabricated steel wall sections have been delivered to the site, and assembly is now underway. These steel panels are being anchored in place, after which they will be filled with concrete to enhance structural rigidity and thermal resistance. Meanwhile, work continues at the Sanchez site, where SpaceX is assembling key infrastructure for the launch mount and flame diverter. The launch mount is currently being outfitted with large diameter deluge water pipes and related components, which are crucial for cooling and sound suppression during ignition. However, several critical installations are still pending, 
including the booster hold-down clamps and the 20 outer booster quick disconnect mechanisms. These QDs will supply high-pressure gases to the Raptor engine preburners, initiating the turbopump spin-up sequence before startup. Progress is also being made on the flame diverter system, with the water distribution channels now fully mounted onto its frame. Teams have started drilling precisely spaced holes into these channels, allowing water to be sprayed through them during engine ignition. This water will act as a thermal buffer, absorbing heat and mitigating the intense acoustic energy generated by the exhaust, while the diverter itself redirects the plume away from the vehicle and launch pad. While several months of work remain to complete the flame trench, install and integrate the diverter and launch mount, and bring the launch pad into full operation, SpaceX appears to be prioritizing the activation of the launch tower as soon as possible. Since its installation in January, the tower's chopstick arms have undergone multiple activation tests, including horizontal movement, opening and closing operations, and vertical movement trials. With each test, the arms were incrementally raised higher than before, stopping at different heights for system checks before returning to their resting position at the base of the tower. Last week, the chopstick arms reached their maximum height for the first time, with multiple pauses for system verification during the ascent. Overall, two full vertical motion tests were conducted, and additional trials are planned, including opening and closing sequences at the tower's apex to simulate mid-air starship catch maneuvers. Notably, the Pad B chopstick arms are shorter than those on Pad A, a design modification aimed at minimizing vibrations during closing operations and enhancing the precision required for catching. The reduced length also improves the efficiency of control algorithms, enabling faster and more accurate positioning during vehicle retrieval. It's believed that Pad B will be exclusively used for catching the Starship upper stage. Initially, SpaceX planned to catch the ship during the upcoming Flight 9 and installed catching lugs on Ship 35 with heavy reinforcements. However, given the back-to-back -back upper stage anomalies during Flight 7 and 8, SpaceX will most likely postpone the ship catch attempt to Flight 10, directing Ship 35 for an ocean splashdown as in previous flight tests. Moreover, before attempting a ship catch, SpaceX needs data on how the catch lugs will perform under extreme re-entry stresses and heating to determine if further design adjustments are necessary. Flight 9 re-entry data will be crucial in deciding readiness for a catch attempt in Flight 10. While SpaceX has not provided official confirmation, the rapid progress and ongoing Pad B tower arm tests suggest a high likelihood of their use for ship recovery in Flight 10. Current developments suggest that all major mechanical and hydraulic components are installed and operational raising the possibility that Tower 2 could catch a ship even if the pad infrastructure remains incomplete. However, extensive validation testing, including load-bearing assessments, actuation drills, and software integration tests, must be conducted before SpaceX can gain full confidence in the system. Additionally, other critical subsystems require verification, such as the landing rails that absorb impact during a catch, vehicle stabilization pins, linear actuators, and other mechanical components essential for stable catching operations. The water deluge system for Pad B is currently under construction near Tower 2. Several water storage tanks have already been installed, and excavation work has begun to lay down the pipelines that will transport water from the tanks to the pad. Additionally, new water storage tanks are arriving, indicating that more tanks will be added to the existing eight. For comparison, Pad A deluge system consists of only seven tanks, meaning Pad B will have a larger water storage capacity. This increased capacity will support both the flame diverter and the launch mount deluge systems, ensuring they meet the cooling and acoustic suppression requirements during launches. Alongside the deluge system, work is progressing on the installation of cryogenic propellant transfer lines and electrical conduits, which will connect Pad B to supporting infrastructure. The tank farm is also undergoing expansion with additional propellant storage tanks, high-capacity pumps, and heat exchangers to support the growing demands of both launch pads. Furthermore, an electrical and communication bunker was delivered to the launch site last week and is currently being set up near the existing bunker. This facility will house power distribution systems, communication infrastructure, and control equipment essential for coordinating launch operations. At the production site, teams have begun demolishing the high bay to make way for the construction of the Giga Bay. The demolition process began with cutting away sections of the roof, creating an opening for cranes to remove installations from the upper region of the high bay. The first to be dismantled were the bridge crane sections, which had been used for stacking Starship vehicles inside the high bay. Next, the elevators were removed one by one. 
Teams are currently dismantling the building's top section by cutting it into pieces and removing them individually. In the coming weeks, more sections of the high bay and its internal components will be dismantled, leading to the complete demolition of the building. Alongside the high bay, the wedge-shaped section of the Star Factory and the Stargate office building are also slated for removal. This will clear space for the construction of the Giga Bay, which, when completed, will stand 116 meters tall and offer an enormous 1.3 million cubic meters of interior space. Designed to support the assembly of the next-generation Starship and Super Heavy vehicles, the facility will be capable of accommodating vehicles up to 81 meters in height. Compared to the existing Mega Bays, the Giga Bay will provide 11 times more workspace and will feature 24 dedicated work cells for integration and refurbishment. The project is targeted for completion by the end of 2026. A similar facility is planned for SpaceX's Roberts Road site at Kennedy Space Center to support Starship launches from Pad 39A. The launch tower at Pad 39A was stacked in 2022, and last week, teams began installing sheet pilings to prepare for excavation work at the launch pad. This marks the beginning of flame trench construction, similar to what is currently being built for Starbase Pad B. According to SpaceX, pending environmental approvals, the first Starship launch from Florida is expected by late 2025. Now, let's dive into the latest breakthroughs and developments in science and technology. NASA's Artemis II mission preparations are progressing steadily, with significant milestones achieved in the past week. On March 23, at the Kennedy Space Center Vehicle Assembly Building, technicians successfully integrated the core stage of the Space Launch System rocket, towering at 65 meters, between the twin solid rocket boosters. These boosters, responsible for providing over three-quarters of the SLS's 39 meganewtons of thrust at liftoff, are now physically and electrically connected to the core stage at forward and aft attach points. The next steps involve stacking additional components atop the core stage, starting with the launch vehicle stage adapter, followed by the interim cryogenic propulsion stage, which provides in-space propulsion. The process will culminate with the installation of the Orion spacecraft and its launch escape system. The Artemis II Orion spacecraft is currently inside the Neil Armstrong Operations and Checkout building at Kennedy Space Center. Earlier this month, Orion's solar array wings were secured to its exterior, completing a major phase of assembly. And this past week, fairing panels that encapsulate the service module and protect those solar array wings during launch and ascent were installed. These fairings are designed to detach once Orion is in space, allowing the solar arrays to deploy. Before integration with the SLS rocket, Orion will undergo final checkouts, including fueling and encapsulating it within its launch abort system to ensure crew safety during liftoff. Following full rocket integration, NASA plans to conduct a wet dress rehearsal at Pad 39B, loading cryogenic propellants into the rocket and simulating countdown procedures to verify system readiness. Artemis II is now targeting a launch as early as February 2026, a two-month acceleration from the previous April 2026 timeline thanks to efficiencies in integration and testing. This mission will carry four astronauts on a 10-day journey around the Moon and back, testing the SLS and Orion systems in deep space with crew aboard for the first time. Astronaut training for Artemis II is also well underway. The crew has been engaged in rigorous mission-specific training since mid-2023 at NASA's Johnson Space Center and other facilities across the United States. They spend their days in Orion simulators and mock-ups, rehearsing every phase of the mission, preparing for this historic journey. Thank you for tuning in for the latest science news and Starship updates. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, so you never miss an episode.